Brett Okamoto, UFC 290 Fight Week with Robert Whitaker, who, uh, of course, takes on Dracus Duplessis uh, on the main card. And, uh, Rob, I feel like you and I were kind of exchanging texts a lot back and forth, like at the end of last year, beginning of this year, and it was mostly kind of the same thing of like, I don't know. I don't know what they're, what they're yeah. going to do with me. How was, uh, how was that, sort of going through that process of like, it's not like you're just some prelim guy. You're a pretty important part of this sport and this division, and it's like, where do you fit Rob? How did you deal with all of that? Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a... It was a weird feeling, to be honest. It's, uh, I felt like I should be doing something. I felt like, like I should be working towards something. It, it, it felt like I didn't have a job, to be honest. Like, it was weird. It was a weird sort of exist, existence at the time. But uh, after, after February fell through and I spoke to Mick and, and, and Hunter and we, we pretty much just I said, give me someone. Ask around. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. you know, Drake has put his hand up and the rest is history. Here we are. Yeah. And then... Um so were you happy with it, with it, I guess? Like, it's one thing to be like, yeah, you know what? Just give me anybody. But then when you get anybody, like, were you, were you happy with, with it? Are you content well, with how it worked out? Certainly, certainly. I meant it when I said give me anyone. Mm -hmm. Like, And uh, it, it, it's, it's, he's a good name to fight. You know, ranked five. He's up there. He's, he's earned his go. He's, he's, he's had some hard fights. And uh, he's a young, hungry dude. Let's, let's get it. I mean, obviously, you're no stranger to being a favorite in a fight. This one feels different, you know, like, mm. like it's almost like you're being having to answer about it all the time. Like, oh, yeah. under, under, <clears throat> overestimate, underestimate, overestimate. It just seems like that's a theme of it. Has that been weird to like just go into a fight where it, that's like part of the storyline going in? It's just how, how much better is Rob than this guy? Yeah, um, mate, it's exactly that. It's the same thing around the, uh, you know, around the media channels. It's just kind of underestimate him. Anyone that has, has lost. And I, I'm not going to do that. I'm preparing for the best version of him that comes out. And uh, yeah, if I, if I play my cards right, I put in the hard work and the night's mine, he shouldn't get close to me. Did, was it ever difficult to, to do that? I mean, when you got every, kind of this echo chamber of like, Rob's going to be a huge favorite in this fight, was it ever hard to, to kind of remind yourself? Definitely not. It's, uh, if fights were one on paper, you know what I mean? It's, it's, that's not how the fight game works. Mm -hmm. I've seen you have given him credit for that he has been in these opportunities where he could take a route out, but he doesn't. He's mm. got heart. Why do you think he finds himself in those opportunities, though? Like, why, <laughs> why, do, you, why do you think yeah. he's found himself in trouble in these fights? Well, you see, th I guess that's the golden question. It's good that you picked that up because he shouldn't be in those spots <laughs> to begin with. I get, you know, that would be the optimum route. But the fact that he, the fact that he is and can surmount it and can take victory from those positions, you know, is, is props to him. But better not getting those positions in the first place <laughs> well i agree when you watch when you watch somebody like that do you as a fighter say like i'm gonna i'm gonna be able to put away this guy i see i actually see opportunities in his game or like i know that i can end his night early do you actually think that way my my game is about working the skills my skill set as best i can to create those opportunities i'm gonna get in there and i'm gonna hit him and punch him and take him down and grapple him and create opportunities, create holes in his games, just so that he has no answer. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you've been asked a lot of these questions repeatedly. Nothing exists past July 8th. But I gotta, I, first of all, I got to say, I'm very excited that you have now come out and said, that you're going to hunt Israel and, and for, for the rest of your life, that this means something to you. You know, you know us interviewers and media, we kind of want you to say those types of things. You've never yeah. said them before. So now to come out and like actually put that out into the universe that like, mm -hmm. no, I got to take it from this guy. Yeah. Does it feel good for you? Cause it feels, it feels good for me hearing that. Like I want that, you know, I want like Rob being like, I got to beat Israel out of time. Yeah. It's just as a warrior, as a professional, like that's just what I got to do. I gotta, I gotta get the win back off, off Izzy. That's just the, the plan, you know. I want to win the title as well. There are two goals. If I can get them at the same time, that'd be perfect. But yeah, that's, that's that, that's the objective. Because the obstacle and the challenge that Izzy has presented me in, in, in my career has elevated me. I've become a better fighter for it, and I, I do believe that overcoming, you know, overcoming him and figuring out that puzzle that he is, yeah, it'll take me to a to a new level yeah. it'll enlighten me <laughs> why do you think it was that fight or that knockout that finally broke you broke that feeling that you had of like i don't care about that guy if i beat him i beat him i don't i don't why was it that one where you're not in the cage with him you're sitting there watching it mm. as a spectator why was it that moment that said i need to beat this guy well it's one of those things that like you don't realize how much you want something until you you almost don't get it until you lose it or whatever mm -hmm. it's uh it was yeah it was just in that moment that i realized like oh I want to win the title off him. That's how, that's how, that's what that moment really cemented for me. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah, and and I guess those feelings, I just kind of come to terms with those feelings of just understanding myself, just how I feel and, and what I want. Um, last thing, and I, I know you said like nothing exists past July 8th, so I don't know if I'm going to fight Sydney. Obviously, that's kind of what the calendar is. Mm-hmm. We don't know what's going to happen in the fight. Do you feel like, though, you're going to need to figure it out pretty quickly? Like the night of the fight, they're going to be putting <clears throat> this guy in front of you. And, and I mean, I've seen, I've seen the UFC offer fights to, to people on the same evening that they win, you know? Mm. Do you feel like you're gonna have to make that decision pretty quickly? That's Sunday Rob's problem. You <laughs> <laughs> gotta have to worry about it, you know? Yeah. If I, if, I win the, if I win the fight on Saturday, everything is kosher, mate. Yeah, well, I hope, you know, you're putting Sunday Rob in a, and you know, you're not giving that guy too much of, a, of, of, of sympathy here. You yeah. know, he's gonna have to be dealing right. with that. That's just, be, Sunday Rob is right. not too far away. Sunday Rob's <laughs> tough, he'll work it out, I'm sure. I believe you will. Well, thank you so much for the time, man. Looking forward to the fight, best of luck. Thank you, mate. <clears throat>